So in FreeCAD, I'm going to show you how to use the rotational sweep to help you with your surface modeling. Rotational sweep is part of the Curse Workbench, and this is installed from the Add-on Manager. So Tools and Add-on Manager, and you'll find it in there. Let's give you a quick demonstration of how we can use this tool. So I'm going to come over to the Sketcher. And with normal sweeps, we need a sketch for the profile. Let's say our profile is on the XZ plane, and hit OK. And we'll make a profile on here. Let's try just a simple curve. Something like that. Won't bother too much about constraints. I'm just going to place that point on this line. Point on object constraint. Let's close that. And then we need a path. So this is our profile. And then we'll create a new sketch, making sure nothing's selected along the XY plane. I'm looking down on this. So I want to sweep this along a curve. So let's go for an arc. So I'm going to use the input geometry, create external geometry, and we'll take this point here and create an arc from this point all the way up. And we'll create some curvature in here. Let's create a couple of arcs. We'll have some tangency in a minute and connect back to this point. This line, like so. Right click to cancel the tool, take the two arcs, create the tangency across those. OK, and also these two as well. Tangency. OK, and I'm going to place this point over here. Let's make this point and this point symmetrical with this point using the symmetry constraint. A redundant constraint number two, click that and hit delete. And take this point and this one, which is my import geometry. Make those coincident. A redundant constraint here, let's click that and hit delete as well. So basically, we've got this arc here. We're not fully constrained and we're not fully symmetrical either. But that's fine. I'm happy with that. Let's hit close. Now, if I took this with a normal sweep over the part workbench, this is what will happen. So this arc I'm going to use with this tool here, the sweep. First, we need our profile. For the available profiles is this sketch here. Let's double click that, this sketch. And I need to click sweep path and control select the path that it wants to follow. So each of the edges along that path and hit done and then hit OK. So what's happened is this arc follows this path. And you can see that we've got intersecting faces here. So what it's done is just follow this around and this point here moves, which is the problem that we're facing. I don't want this to move. I want this to create a full canopy going across here. Let's delete that sweep. And this is where the rotational sweep comes in. I am going to do one more thing. I'm going to come into that profile, double click it. I'm going to create another profile on the other side. Let's make sure on the model that this sketch here of the path is shown by pressing the space bar. So we can see that in there. I don't want to import anything in from this sketch because it's been created after and I'll get a circular reference. So all I'm going to do is use Great B spline. Hover over this point, Winston, and we're going to create a B spline. Just going to zigzag this in and we'll connect up to this line here with a point on line constraint. So at the moment, I've got two profiles in one sketch. Let's close that. And let's edit this sketch now because I want to make sure and I might have to drop my symmetry constraint for this that I'm going to connect up to this point here. So yes, yeah, so let's drop the symmetry constraints, the symmetry constraint here. Let's delete that. And I'm going to use I actually delete the wrong one. So let's delete that one. There it goes. Use the import geometry and we import this point. 
right click to cancel, take this point and this one and use the constant constraint. Do the same this side as well because we're not actually connected up to that one. It's not a symmetrical arc, but that's okay. Let's close that. So now with the tool over in the Curse Workbench, I have to first select the path. So select a sweep path, then select some profiles. Now the problem is, is that if I select this one, the minute I select one edge, then control select another, this will be our sweep path and this will be our profile, which we don't want. So we have to create a single edge for the sweep path. And also in the profiles, if this was a two edge profile, then we need to join it together. So let's take this sketch. So this one here, select it from the left hand side, that selects all those edges. And then come up to this tool, the join curve. If I click that, the sketch disappears and we get a single edge that we can use. So first of all, select the sweep path and then select the profile. And I want just this profile. So I'm using one edge from my profile sketch. And we use the tool, rotational sweep. Click that. What happens is that we've rotated around this point and the profile deforms around the path covering the whole of that path. If we did it with the other profile, let's delete that. We can see what happens. We took the other profile and used that path. We'll just first select the path first. Always select the path first, then the profile, and then use the tool. We get this shaped surface now. Don't worry about the look of it. That's just because if I click on the rotational sweep, I can increase the profiles, make it a bit more smoother. And it still looks a bit low quality and that's just the deviation. So I can come over to the view, look at the deviation and set this to something like 0.1. And that cleans that up. So what happens if we select two profiles? We've got this nice surface. If I wanted to merge these profiles, I just clicked on the rotational sweep there and deleted it, pressing the delete on the keyboard. If I select the path and then control select one profile, then the other, a merge will be created against these two profiles. Using the rotational sweep, you can see how we swept from a smooth profile into this B spline one. And again, we can come in and increase on the data tab the number of profiles. Get a better look. And also on the view, the deviation, change this to 0 0.1. Lowering that deviation cleans up that surface. So we've got an interesting surface. Though we've got this blend, we can use the profiles to control the shape as well, rather than blending. Let's start a new document over in the Sketcher. We're going to create a new sketch along the YZ plane and hit OK. So in here, I'm going to create an arc and a line. Connects up to the vertical axis. Right click to cancel, and we can add some tangency against these two. So this is our first profile. Let's close that, make sure nothing's selected, and create another profile. This time along the XZ plane, and hit OK. So this profile, let's pull in some geometry making sure the points will line up and create a similar profile, a line, and also an arc. If 
right click cancel and taking these two and making them tangent and hitting OK. Let's close that now. This profile is going to restrict this one. So I'm going to revolve this along a path and then restrict it via this profile. So the first thing we need is a path to revolve this along. And I'm going to come over to the Curse Workbench and I'm going to use the vertex of these sketches by making sure nothing's selected. Select one and control select the other. Those two are selected there and using the freehand B spline. Places a spline between those. I'm going to click on the spline because it's in edit mode at the moment and hit I on the keyboard. That inserts a point. Let's look at this from the top. We model this all in one plane. I'm going to push this up to the top and then select this line here. So this is a segment line. I'm going to hit I on the keyboard again. Adds another point. I'm going to bring this down to contain that curvature. So this is the path that I want to travel. Let's double click on that freehand B-spline. So I've got that in there. At the moment, my profile is two edges. So we need to combine those two edges. So we look at the sketch, the top one, and use the join curves. So create the join curves out of that. I'm going to do the same with the freehand B-spline. Now there is a reason for doing that, and that allows me greater control of the continuity against these. That means the chances of this being offset by the 3D offset tool in the part increases to quite an extent. Select the freehand B spline and use the join curves. So I've now got two join curves. Let's look at the data. And I've got the shape approximation there, which at the moment is active as false. We can change this later. So if I take the path, control select the profile and use the tool, page on sweep, it sweeps it along that path. If we look at the side, we notice the height isn't being controlled. And that's where this profile comes into play. So we have look around to the other side, the profile at the moment sits here. So we can see it in there. So let's change that to join curves. Select the sketch and choose Join Curves. Now we'll add this in as a second profile. We don't have to redo the rotational sweep. All we have to do is click on the rotational sweep, come down and look at the profiles. And we have the Join Curve Edge 1 in there. Let's click in here, click on the button, and we just select the next Join Curve. We select the wrong one, so this one, just click on it again to unselect it and hit OK. Look on the left hand side, the rotational sweep needs a recompute. Click on off, it will take and it will conform to that line. We will now have this shape. Let's add some thickness to this. First of all, let's hide the freehand B spline, press the spacebar on that and also control select all of the join curves, press the spacebar to make sure they're hidden. Using the part workbench, we take the rotational sweep and try to use the offset. Notice it's failed. There are a number of things you can do to make this successful. Let's cancel that. First of all, let's have a look at the rotational sweep and look at the smooth top and set that to true and click off. Try again, select the rotational sweep and use the offset we still have a problem. Let's cancel that. The join curves, as said before, if I control select all of those, so we add the property at the same time. If we look down on the data tab, we've got the shape approximation. It's active at the moment as false. Drop this down to true. What happens? We get a continuity now here. Let's click off. Select the rotational sweep and use the 3D offset. 
And you can see we've created a successful 3D offset. And we can fill the offset. And hit OK. The offset inside that a rotational sweep will still be visible. And the reason being is because the offset fill can be made as false, leaving us with two surfaces. So this is never made hidden. Make sure we hide it, use the offset, and set the fill to true, and click off. We successfully created our sweep and offset it. The rotational sweep also has a number of other options. We can add extra profiles. So let's raise this to six. And this can clean up the surface as shown before. With this one, I don't need it. I'm going to drop that down to zero and have a look to see what I've got. And that's sufficient for me. We also got something called face support. And this allows us to create tangency against its support. Let's just delete that offset. Hit delete. So we're back to the rotational sweep. We come around and show the join curve. This side, hide the rotational sweep. Click on press the space bar and select the join curve. What I'm going to do is extrude this now. And we want to go in the Z direction, positives up, next is down. So let's go minus 10 and OK that. So let's say this is our base. And we've got the rotational sweep that sits on top of it. We can make a cleaner transition between the two and control the surface with this surface here, the extrude. Select the rotational sweep, come down to the face support, select the button on the end, and click on the extrude. If I hit OK, what will happen? We're going to recompute. If I click off, you notice that the nose of this surface was raised. We get a much better transition between the two. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you in the new one. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.